Hello comrades, you're watching Red Ivan Airsoft and today we'll talk about uniforms and equipment of the Belarusian Airborne units in 1993. Specifically, we'll discuss this rare camouflage pattern, interesting insignias and unusual elements of uniforms and equipment used by early Belarusian VDV. <laughs> On May 20, 1992, the 103rd Guards Airborne Division based in Vitebsk was incorporated into the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus. It is a very well-trained unit with a glorious combat experience. Units of 103rd Airborne Division participated in the operation Baikal 79, which means that formations of this division entered Afghanistan among the first, and they were withdrawn among the last. In January of 1990, due to the difficult situation in the Transcaucasus, the 103rd Airborne Division was reassigned to the border troops of the KGB of the USSR and put on the reinforcement of the border troops guarding the state border of USSR with Iran and Turkey. The formations of 103rd Airborne Division were subordinate to KGB border troops from January 4, 1990 to August 28, 1991. And as we already said, in 1992, the 103rd Airborne Division was included into the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus. In 1993, based on the command of the 103rd Airborne Division, the command of the Mobile Forces of the Republic of Belarus was created. On September 1, 1995, the regiments were reorganized into brigades. 317th Guards Airborne Regiment became 317th Separate Mobile Brigade. 350th Guards Airborne Regiment became 350th Separate Mobile Brigade and 357th Guard Airborne Regiment became 357th Separate Training Mobile Battalion. At the end of 2002, the battle banner of 103rd Airborne Division was transferred to the 317th Separate Mobile Brigade of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Belarus. From that moment on, it bears the name of the 103rd Separate Guards Mobile Brigade. In 2007, the 103rd Separate Guards Mobile Brigade became the part of the Special Operation Forces of the Armored Forces of the Republic of Belarus. So, as you can see, Belarusian airborne units experienced more transformations than Autobots and Decepticons. But we are interested in camouflage, headgear and insignia for the period of 1993. And we will start with heads. Of course, as a service hat and very often as a field hat, Belarusian paratroopers wore their pride blue beret. It is interesting that back in 1992, new cockades with Belarusian symbols were developed for the Ministry of Internal Affairs and for the Armed Forces of the young Belarusian state. You can see the cockade for the Armed Forces in my left hand and the cockade for the Ministry of Internal Affairs in my right hand. And contrary to the modern articles, if the cockade for the Ministry of Internal Affairs uh, really was used by the MVD troops, the army cockade had no use in the airborne forces. And I also did not find uh, it in use by other army units of those days. Maybe it was reserved specifically for the parade uniforms. But even on the parade uniforms of the airborne units, I couldn't find it. On all pictures taken between 1992 and 1995, which I saw, only the Soviet cockade for officers and soldiers comes across. And this Belarusian army cockade I only saw in the pictures of the Belarusian nationalists who have no affiliation with the Belarusian armed forces. As you remember, for a short period of time from 1990 to 1991, the 103rd Airborne Division was a part of the border troops, and the soldiers who served at that time are not particularly proud of this period. I will read you a short excerpt. Due to the decision taken by some smart heads, the division was no longer airborne, but also not yet a KGB. Combat officers have been turned into clowns. Green caps, green shoulder straps, green patches, but blue tilnashkas, airborne insignia on caps and shoulder straps. Among the people, such a wild mixture of uniforms was nicknamed conductor. As we see, all these green attributes were not loved in the Soviet times. But it is interesting that on some pictures of the Belarusian period of 1993, I managed to find this green beret. Unfortunately, this picture was taken with a blue filter, so it is not obvious that the guy in the middle has a green beret. But it is easy to identify by distinct blue beret flash. This blue beret flash was shown at the factory on all green berets, 
issued to the 103rd Airborne Division at the time it was the part of the border troops. Thus, it looks like what was the shame at the Soviet times turned into the Dembel show off in the Belarusian period. Of course, most of the time soldiers had blue beret. And again, I think that this green beret is a kind of a Dembel show off, which can be worn only when officers don't see. And most of the time, blue airborne beret was worn in its Soviet configuration with Soviet cockade and Soviet red beret flash. Cap was also worn as a field uniform, mostly in the Soviet Bhutan camouflage pattern. Caps in Belarusian camouflage pattern were also produced since 1993, but looks like they were not fielded as often as Bhutan caps. Field uniforms. Some officers still wore uniform in Soviet Bhutan camouflage pattern in airborne cut. Airborne cut has some distinct features such as only two pockets on the chest of the jacket and some variants had openings for suspenders on the jacket and D-rings for suspenders on the pants, like you see on this picture. If you want to know more about the Afghanka uniform, differences between general issue and the airborne cut, its generations, click the link you see on the screen right now. We will not uh, discuss it as a part of this video. More often, between 1993 and 1996, and in some units all the way until 1999, Belarusian Airborne wore uniforms in this rare Belarusian camouflage pattern. This camouflage is based on the Soviet camouflage pattern, which among collectors is called Bhutan of 1991. As you can see, these patterns are very similar. They have the same size of elements, both patterns were produced in numerous shades, the difference is that the size of the Soviet pattern is 42 cm, which means 42 cm before the repetition, while Belarusian camo is only 20 cm. Basically, the piece of the Soviet pattern was cut and looped and became Belarusian camo. Similar thing happened to the Ukrainian Bhutan U, which is also a cut and loop version of the Soviet Bhutan camouflage which was produced since 1994 and the production continued even after 1997 when another Ukrainian camouflage pattern called Dubok was adopted and various variants of the Bhutan U were produced all the way until 2014. But again, you can find out more about it in my other video. Coming back to the Belarusian pattern, we need to point that it does not have any relation to so-called Transnistrian Bhutan. Both Belarusian and Transnistrian Bhutan are based on the Soviet Bhutan of 1991. But if we put Soviet and Transnistrian Bhutan side by side, they have very little in common. So unlike Belarusian Bhutan, Transnistrian Bhutan is a completely new camouflage, just slightly based on the Soviet Bhutan of 1991. Belarusian Bhutan was produced from 1993 to 1996, and this pattern was not exclusively used by airborne troops. I mean primarily it was used by the Belarusian Airborne. But there are some pictures of border guards and MVD units wearing this pattern. This pattern was produced in the standard Afghan cut, so four pockets on the jacket. But in airborne units, jacket was tucked into the pants. Sometimes soldiers removed lower pockets, sometimes just tucked jacket with lower pockets. Belts. Officers used Soviet brown leather officer's belt. Uh, soldiers were mostly seen using their service belt, which is leather belt with brass buckle, even in the field. I don't have the service belt, so I use this field belt. Uh, field belt is the belt made of canvas, or painted brown, with um, olive uh, star buckle. These belts were issued, these belts were stored in the warehouses, but for some reason uh, on the pictures um, they are seen less often. Few words about patches. In 1992, for the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus, this combined arms patch was developed with the first flag of Belarus. This patch was widely used within the armed forces, but not in the airborne units. Airborne kept the Soviet insignia. In most cases, it was a standard Soviet patch with no changes to it. But some soldiers removed hammer and sickle and kept a plain red star. So I decided to replicate this unique version with the plain red star. Also, recon units at that time had another interesting patch. Around 1995, based on the standard Belarusian shield, new airborne patches were designed. You see the early patch of 350th Airborne Regiment and the later patch when it turned into the 350th Separate Mobile Brigade. 
text on the regiment patch is in Belarusian, parachut na desantny polk, while text in the patch of the mobile brigade is in Russian, mobilne sily, adelnaya mobilnaya brigada. Boots. Soldiers were mostly issued with Soviet sapogi boots, and only officers or very lucky soldiers could be seen wearing the Soviet uh, laced boots, model of 1981, also known as Derivashki. During the Afghan era, 103rd Airborne Division also was issued with so-called oblegchonki boots, but in the Belarusian times they were not seen. And as always, if you want to know more about the Afghanistan period of 103rd Airborne Division, Click the link on the screen. KZS suit and KLMK coverall were used. Equipment. Of course, RD-54 backpack was widely used. Soviet 4-cell mag pouch and Soviet grenade pouch, MPL-50 shovel, airborne canteen, general issue Soviet canteen was also issued to those who were not lucky enough to get airborne canteen, and other Soviet equipment. Few words about the body armor. All units were equipped with SSH-68 helmets and 6B-5 body armor vests. During the Afghanistan war, even by the end of the conflict, troops of the 103rd Airborne Division were issued with old 6B-2 body armor vests, so it is reasonable that after the conflict they were re-equipped with 6B-5, which was the newest army body armor vest of that time. Small arms. Of course, it is AKS-74, AKS-74U, GP-25 under barrel grenade launcher, RPG-7D grenade launcher, RPK-74 and PKM machine guns, Dragunov sniper rifles. Officers were also issued with Makarov pistols. Now let's see how it all looks together. This time I prepared two sets. One is canonic officer set and the second one is that unique temple with green beret and unusual patch. I hope you like this video, put like, subscribe, comment, if you want to help channel financially links are in the description, recommend this channel to your friends and see you soon.